welcome to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. And now, your host, Tim Johnson. Dr. Sandra Woodley became the eighth president of the University of Louisiana system in January of 2013. The UL system has nine universities under its governance, Grambling, Louisiana Tech, McNeese, Nichols State, Northwestern, Southeastern, the University of Louisiana Lafayette, the University of Louisiana Monroe, and the University of New Orleans. As the largest higher education system in the state, the university system serves about 90,000 students with a total operating budget of over 752 million. The system plays a critical role in the economy of our state. Dr. Sandra Woodley, President of the University of Louisiana System, joins us when we return on the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. The Louisiana Business and Industry Show will be back right after this. Hi, I'm Joe Martin, President of ITI Technical College. Do you want a better life? Get your associate's degree in occupational studies in information technology from ITI. In two years, you'll be on your way to a better life. You will get hands-on specialized training in computers, hardware and software, networking, and more. ITI offers flexible class schedules, and financial aid is available to those who qualify. So don't wait. Call ITI now or go online. It's that simple. ITI for a better life. I'm Leighton Ricks, Livingston Parish, and Livingston Parish is on the move. One of the primary things that we ran on was developing uh, business and jobs in Livingston Parish for our people uh, so that we can bring, obviously, uh, additional revenue to be able to support our infrastructure needs. We're going to continue to progress here in Livingston Parish. When everybody comes together, these kind of things happen. I mean, what can you say? It's absolutely awesome. It's the perfect place to be. It's where you want to be today. I can guarantee you that. Hi, I'm Lee Burkeen with Louisiana Football TV Magazine. Be sure to watch our show every week. We have big time recruits, college coaches, NFL players, current and former players, and call ins with your questions. Be sure to catch us every Tuesday night at 6.30 live and 10.30 replayed on Cox 4 in Baton Insurance commercials have become unusually funny. We think that's strange because we take auto coverage pretty seriously at Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Of course, when you cover as many vehicles in Louisiana as we do, it doesn't leave a lot of time for silly gimmicks. We're more concerned about what happens to you on the road than any chickens that happen to cross it just to make you chuckle. Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show with Tim Johnson. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. It's my great pleasure to welcome as our guest today, Dr. Sandra Woodley. Dr. Woodley is the president of the University of Louisiana System. And Dr. Woodley, we set it up in the open to the show. 90,000 students, nine institutions, over $752 million budget. What else do we need to know about the University of Louisiana system? Well, we're the largest producer of degrees in the state. And so, you know, we produce over 16,000 degrees every single year, and about 12,000 of those are baccalaureate degrees. So when we look at the, uh, the issues pressing Louisiana on competitiveness and these wonderful problem to have about all of these jobs rolling in, it's very crucial that my system in particular or in particular had the, the ability to continue to ramp up and produce those graduates. And, and you are producing a large number of graduates, a large number of doctoral degrees as well. Mm -hmm. And so the impact that you have on the economy is something we'll talk a little bit later mm -hmm. uh, about in more detail. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit about your background, mm -hmm. the, the, maybe the career path that led you to be the president of the University of Louisiana system. I know it's a little bit non-traditional, isn't it? Yeah, it's not your usual path. Uh, I got married at 18 and found myself with two small children and no degree. Uh, and unlike uh, many of the students in our system, uh, I didn't make it in four years and I didn't make it in six years. In fact, it took me 10. 
I like to say 10 years and two babies uh, to get that undergraduate degree. But I really do believe those experiences helped me in my particular system because there are a lot of students out there in Louisiana who find themselves working almost full-time jobs and trying to find their way to you know, a career pathway under very difficult circumstances. And so um, being the quintessential non-traditional student, if you will, gives me insight that I think has helped me uh, look for very sophisticated strategies to make sure that all of the different categories of students in our system have a pathway to success and that we don't overly penalize the institutions who serve a lot of non-traditional students. Uh, we need to be able to think about the difficulty of the task and all of the different uh, variables that go into uh, you know, success for our students. The success you've had in what is mm -hmm. actually a non-traditional mm -hmm. path can serve as a great example mm -hmm. too to a lot of those students who may be in your system. What does a university system president do day to day? What's your job like? You would be surprised. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's, it's so varied and every day is so different. I do spend a great deal of my time, obviously, uh, thinking about strategy for the system. I think the system's role is to add value to the system. Uh, the other role for the system is to solve problems. And, you know, um, all systems and all universities have challenges and trying to make sure that we clear the brush, if you will, to make sure that our institutions have the best chance to be successful. And, you know, I think it's also uh, true that systems have to have smart, intelligent policies. And I think many times we get bogged down into overly bureaucratic uh, administration where we don't need to, and I think we don't spend enough time on uh, value adding and strategy, the strategy proposition. And so my, my take is a little different, I think, than maybe some un systems that I've been a part of in the past, and it is a, it's a value added proposition. So um, I work very hard to support the nine presidents in our system and to uh, be there for them and to also hold them accountable where we have problems that we have to solve. Isn't that the real role of a leader though, right? Sure. You put good people in place, yeah. your, your university presidents, and I know how critical that mm -hmm. is. You set direction, mm -hmm. you help them with strategy, and then you provide them with the tools that they need to be successful. Is that pretty much the approach you've taken? That's true, and you also have to be willing to step in when something's wrong. So it's not enough in my view to say I hire good people and um, I'm going to stay out of their way. I think you have to stay out of, out of their way in every way that makes sense. When you have a problem, and many of the problems that come up aren't the fault of the presidents. Right. You know, there are lots of uh, exogenous variables that roll into you know, university life, and I think we have to be honest with ourselves about our challenges, and we have to find a collective way to solve it. And I have a fantastic group of presidents who are you know, hitting on all cylinders to try to get this done. So I stay out of the way when I can, and when I need to step in, I do. And I'm certain that they appreciate the support I those so. problems do arise and you <laughs> need to go. So. We've got about two minutes left in this segment. Let's talk about, you know, there are four systems mm -hmm. in Louisiana, mm -hmm. right? The LSU system, mm -hmm. the University of Louisiana system, the Southern University mm -hmm. system, and the Louisiana community and technical college system. Yeah. So, you know, you think about uh, President uh, Ronald Mason, you think about King Alexander, you think about Joe May and now Monty Sullivan mm -hmm. coming in. What's your relationship like with those mm -hmm. sy other system presidents, mm -hmm. and, and, and how do you work together to accomplish your goals? You know, I am uh, extremely enthusiastic about the, the place we find ourselves in today. Over the past four months, the, these four systems have come together to develop the legislative strategy and to work together. King Alexander and I have been friends for over a decade. We worked together in Kentucky, and he's a, he's a close personal friend of mine, and so I work very well with him, and we have common you know, philosophies about the system. Monty Sullivan has been a great partner. I'm excited to work even closer with him, and the same is true with Ron Mason. So I think, you know, it, it is crucial for these systems to be integrated in, the, in, the, in our working together, in our thought processes, to support each other, and more importantly, I think sometimes to understand and empathize with the challenges that are unique to those other systems that may not be unique to ours. Well, you know, it, I've been involved in politics in Louisiana for mm -hmm. a long time, and we've been so siloed in the yes. past, right, mm -hmm. that the Southern system fought the LSU system mm -hmm. for resources, and the University of Louisiana system fought the community and technical college mm -hmm. system for, for resources. And if you think about the mission of those universities, it really is all the same, right? Mm -hmm. Is to prepare individuals through education to participate sure. successfully in the economy. And so it must be rewarding to come in with a group of folks 
uh, that believe that if we work together, we can achieve more for everyone, right? Well, and competition is not bad. Yeah. Unhealthy competition is bad. Right. And so uh, being competitive is a good thing. Uh, uh, working against each other is a bad thing. And we hope to, and we think we are in a place where we can strike that balance. Well, I want to talk about that preparation for mm -hmm. work in the economy because I know workforce development mm -hmm. is something that's on the radar screen of all of higher education mm -hmm. in Louisiana. We're visiting with Dr. Sandra Woodley. She's the president of the University of Louisiana System, and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show on Cox 4. The Louisiana Business and Industry Show will be back right after this. I go to work every day and I, I just, I love, I love doing what I'm doing and I just, uh, I love being a part of Livingston Parish and to be elected uh, sheriff to be able to lead Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office is just such an honor for me and uh, so I'm very excited about not only where we're at today but where we're going to be at in the future. The parish is so special to the citizens. They work with the Sheriff's Office, they trust the Sheriff's Office. Our community stands behind us 100% and they get involved. They don't want crime in Livingston Parish. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the grand slam hitter to grandparents. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Hello, I'm Eric Edwards with the Livingston Parish Convention and Visitor Bureau. Find out now what's going on in Livingston Parish. We have over 400 nautical miles of waterways. Tee it up at our great world-renowned golf courses. Shop at our antique districts or come to Bass Pro, our number one retailer. There's a lot to do in Livingston Parish that you never imagined. It's all happening right here in Livingston Parish. For more information, go online at visitlivingstonparish.com. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the three-point shooter to the three-piece suit. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show with Tim Johnson. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. I'm your host, Tim Johnson. We're having a great conversation with Dr. Sandra Woodley. She's the president of the University of Louisiana System. And Dr. Woodley, we, we kind of set up the system in the first segment, mm -hmm. talked about its role and the things that you do. Uh, the Louisiana legislative session is underway mm -hmm. as we sit here and mm -hmm. speak today. Uh, I know that there's always lots to look out for, mm -hmm. lots to, to work with. You've got to be there to promote your system and the things you do. I'm sure you're spending some of your time mm -hmm. down at the Capitol day to day. Talk about uh, your engagement in the legislative process, maybe some of the things you guys are working on. And then I want to talk specifically about what's called the WISE plan and your, sure. your efforts around workforce development. Well, I've been here a little bit more than a year, and my role in four other systems uh, revolved pretty heavily around uh, policy makers, which includes our friends in the legislature. So I have a lot of experience in that, and it really comes in handy because, you know, we have a lot of friends in the legislature who have uh, well-meaning ideas about how to help the universities. And I think it's our job to be able to uh, really inform them of the issues make sure that when legislation uh, rolls out that we can uh, point out any unintended consequences that may roll in and really uh, kind of enforce good policy through through legislation where it's possible. So I do spend a great deal of my time working with the legislature and I do a lot of work as do all of my colleagues uh, on the system heads and our presidents behind the scenes all year working with our friends in the legislature to be able to talk about these policy issues that we're working on. Now I know that uh, the governor recently announced some additional funding that was going to be made available to mm -hmm. higher education. Uh, part of it's through tuition increases, we recognize that, but also there's uh, what's called the WISE plan, and I want to make sure I get this right. It's workforce innovation for a stronger economy, mm -hmm. and it really is moving the focus in an even greater way to preparing individuals to participate successfully in the economy, go out and find really mm -hmm. meaningful careers. 
and universities are going to be rewarded for how well they do that. Explain to us, give us a 30 second primer yeah. on what WISE is all about and then we're going to talk specifically about the role of your nine universities sure. in workforce development. Well, all of our programs and graduates are important in Louisiana. What problem that we're trying to solve is we have shortages rolling in because we've been so successful in this state with economic development. So we have a problem. We need good problem more, to have, right? Good problem to have. We need more graduates in certain areas than we are producing now. So in a nutshell, WISE is, is a strategic money that can be leveraged with private resources to tackle that problem. The money is distributed to the institutions based on two really simple factors. Uh, the distribution is, you know, what degrees are you producing in these high demand fields? And uh, uh, what research are you doing to, you know, to, to fuel the economy? Once the institution earns a share based on those outcome metrics, then they have to develop proposals that specifically meet uh, uh, local workforce needs. I mean, for example, think of all of the good news that we've had about the computer science industry here, CSC coming into mm -hmm. the IBM. Mm -hmm. All of these wonderful opportunities give us uh, an urgency around how do we get more computer science uh, uh, graduates. WISE program will allow us to take that money and target it and focus it on some of these major areas while at the same time continuing to make sure that our other programs are strong as well. I think it's about 40 million dollars or so that's going to be, be set aside. Give us some real concrete examples mm -hmm. maybe of, of, of some of the ways that the nine institutions that are mm -hmm. part of the UL system sure. are going to look to use this money. Well, you know, the, the big target areas uh, are star four and star five jobs, right. and that comes out of workforce, and right. they kind of show the area. But it, there's even a more narrow focus than that, and although the, the bill doesn't mandate specifics, it does create a process whereby these strategic plans for your share of the money get vetted uh, through the policymakers. So, for example, you know, we have lots of examples where uh, our institutions are partnering with business and industry to solve problems. Right. GE Capital at University of New Orleans. I mean, this is something that's already happened. They came in, they said, look, I need more computer science grads. I'm willing to give you operating dollars to hire faculty. I'm willing to give you equipment. I'm willing to provide internships uh, for your graduates. So this partnership allowed University of New Orleans, who suffered quite a bit financially, as as all of our institutions, to ramp up a little bit in that particular program for the purpose of creating more graduates. What we're talking about with the $40 million is a way to start the process of scaling that up to a larger IBM and LSU is an Beautiful example. Beautiful example. Of that, right? uh, CSC at Louisiana Tech that just was announced where this computer science company has you know, hundreds of jobs that will be rolling in and are willing to invest in Louisiana Tech to be able to ramp up to be able to produce those. So uh, C-Core and you know, uh, Bollinger Shipyard with Nichols right. around right. being able to get uh, managers, finance majors, who also understand the marine industry. So, you know, there are dozens of examples of this that, is, that are already taking place in our universities. And I think the, the challenge that WISE is there to begin to address is that, you know, the institutions have to have a strong financial base to be able to produce these degrees. And we need faculty, we need equipment, we need to be able to have the capacity to be able to produce uh, these high demand degrees. And, and as I said before, humanities are important to us too. We simply don't have a shortage in that right now. So we still have to be strong enough to have strong humanities programs. Those are important Absolutely. to our economy. And we have to find a way to take care of the shortages. This gives us a window of leveraged dollars to be able to do that. And the other thing, you know, Tim, that I think is really important, uh, that, that may be even more important than the money, is a, a conscious, very systematic a way to, to scale up the um, routines of our institutions to connect with our industry partners. Tell me what you need. Tell me what's not working for you with my curriculum in, in any particular major. How can we partner together to be able to make sure that I'm giving you what you need and you're getting what you need and our students win because they come out of college with a, a career pathway that will sustain them for the rest of their lives? You know, it really is a paradigm shift that I see taking place. For so long, business looked at education at all levels and pointed its finger and said, you don't give us what we sure. need. And education looked back at business and said, you don't really support us and you don't tell us sure. what you're looking for. And I think the conversations that take place in our state 
between business and education mm -hmm. at all levels are so critical and we're seeing that K through 12, we're seeing it community and technical college system and we're seeing it at the university system as well. We're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to really jump into what's on the horizon for the University mm -hmm. of Louisiana system, mm -hmm. where you're headed from here, mm -hmm. and uh, maybe some of the successes that you've had. We're visiting with Dr. Sandra Woodley. She's the president of the University of Louisiana system, and you're watching the Louisiana Business and Industry Show on Cox 4. The Louisiana Business and Industry Show will be back right after this. Hi, I'm Lee Burkeen with Louisiana Football TV Magazine. Be sure to watch our show every week where we have big time recruits, college coaches, NFL players, current and former players, and call ins with your questions. Be sure to catch us every Tuesday night at 6.30 live and 10.30 replayed on Cox 4 in Baton Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College. Do you want a better life? Get your associate's degree in occupational studies in information technology from ITI. In two years, you'll be on your way to a better life. You will get hands-on specialized training in computers, hardware and software, networking, and more. ITI offers flexible class schedules, and financial aid is available to those who qualify. So don't wait. Call ITI now or go online. It's that simple. ITI for a better life. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from the soccer star to the soccer mom. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Insurance commercials have become unusually funny. We think that's strange because we take auto coverage pretty seriously at Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Of course, when you cover as many vehicles in Louisiana as we do, it doesn't leave a lot of time for silly gimmicks. We're more concerned about what happens to you on the road than any chickens that happen to cross it just to make you chuckle. Louisiana Farm Bureau Insurance. Real service. Real people. At Peak Performance Physical Therapy, we treat the athlete in everyone, from long drivers to unlucky drivers. If your doctor prescribes physical therapy, ask for Peak Performance by name, getting you back in the game of life. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show with Tim Johnson. Welcome back to the Louisiana Business and Industry Show. We're visiting with Dr. Sandra Woodley, who is the president of the University of Louisiana System. Nine institutions, 90,000 students, over $750 million budget, so someone with great responsibility in terms of the economy of our state. And You know, you and I were talking to the break, and, and you mentioned that, you know, the universities have to be engaged in workforce development, and we've talked about mm -hmm. that in the last segment. Oftentimes we hear, you know, workforce development is really the purview of the Louisiana Community mm -hmm, and Technical mm -hmm. College System, not the four-year universities. Nothing could be farther from the truth. T tell us your perception, mm -hmm. your perspective on that. Well, I just reject the notion that you have to choose between these two very important ideals. You know, at the, it, it, the intrinsic value of a higher education from being a well-rounded, critical thinking person is what we do. It's also true that virtually all of our graduates want a career pathway that will sustain them financially and intellectually for the rest of their lives. Why must we have to choose between those two things? You know, workforce, when you think of workforce, you know what, you know, doctors and lawyers and computer scientists and engineers, they're workforce they're too. They're all part of the workforce. Right? So as important as our middle skill jobs are, and they are crucial to this state and very important, making sure that we have uh, the whole plethora of talent uh, base, high skill and middle skill in this job is is a, uh, a noble agenda even for higher education. So I, I choose not to think that those two things are separate. We, ha we can do both. We really can and I, you know part of the role I have in my consulting firm is I travel around the country mm -hmm. talking about workforce development, mm -hmm. particularly in the mm -hmm. construction industry. Right. And we've created this culture that says that every thing we might choose from a post-secondary education mm -hmm standpoint is really a dead end, right? So if I go to the community and technical college system and I get mm -hmm. a degree in process technology, then I'm going to work in process technology right. for the rest of my life. I'm never going back mm -hmm. to the university. And that's the general perception that's out there. 
But I've said, I've used this example. What if I'm interested in ele uh, the electrical field and I decide that out of high school or while I'm in high school, I'm going to learn about being an electrician and then I'm going to get out of high school and go to a technical school and get a, a uh -huh. certificate, an industry-based certificate uh -huh. to be an electrician. And then I'm going to go out and work for a few years as an right. electrician. I'm going to gain great experience. And then I'm going to go back to the university at some point and become an electrical engineer. Exactly. Why, why isn't that a great pathway? It's yeah. non-traditional, but why should we even label it that? It's just yes. a pathway. Talk about it's that. It's very valuable. And, and, you know, Monty Sullivan, I think, is going to be a great partner for us. And he and I have already started scheming about how we can scale up some of the successes that we've all already had in integrating our two. But these stackable credentials, as you say, that make it easy for someone who has even a technical uh, background, mechanical, you know, uh, automotive technology is another example, who goes to work and realizes I really enjoy the, this and I want to become a mechanical engineer. Same, you know, same analogy. We should make it easy for that transition to happen. We should provide opportunities and connect students with those opportunities. You know, we have to be able to be smart and sophisticated about how we present our options to students and we're not there yet. One of the initiatives at the University of Louisiana system is to partner with with analytics companies, myedu.com. If you're listening, go there. This is going to be a tool that I think is going to transform how we connect employers with students and how we help students make that exploration. And we've, we've also partnered with a global analytics company, SAS Analytics, to help us build out analytics and dashboards so that we can really understand at a very deep level what we're good at, what we're not good at, and how we make these uh, connections much crisper. You know, it, it, it really is interesting mm. to hear the transformation that has taken place just in the culture around mm. what we do in education at all levels. And I had this conversation with my young son three or four years ago. He's 17 now, my youngest. He was 12 or 13 at the time. And we were following a garbage truck, and we were watching these young men on the back of this garbage truck really hustle. Mm -hmm. And I looked over at him at some point, and I said, you know, Nicholas, what I'd think if you were a garbage man? And he chuckled because society mm -hmm. has conditioned him. Exactly. And he said, you'd be pretty disappointed, wouldn't you, Dad? Sure. And I said, no, son, I'd want you to be the best garbage man you could mm -hmm. be because think about a world without garbage men. Think about a world without electricians. Think about a world without engineers. And the, the idea is, is that in our economy, all role, all jobs, all careers play a specific exactly. role. Everything we do is going to require us to learn for the rest of our lives. True. But we put these labels that say, well, if you mm -hmm. got your degree at the university, you're one thing. And if you got it at the technical school, mm -hmm. you're another thing. And if you got it at the community college, you're another thing. When, in fact, all of us all play good. a role. Mm -hmm. We've got about 30 seconds left. What's on the horizon for the system? Well, we, we intend to aggressively pursue our ability to ramp up the production in our system and to be very responsive, not only to workforce, but to you know the, the general uh, uh, needs of this state in our system. We're really excited about the future at the University of Louisiana system. Good things going on. I look forward to having you back sometime soon to talk about it. Dr. Sandra Woodley, thank you for being with thank us. Thank you. That's a wrap, guys. Join us again at this next week at this very same time for another edition of the Louisiana Business and Industry Show on Cox Sports.